What are you doing here? Hideki asked blankly. Yeah, it's great to see you too, Harmony replied, the sarcastic tone painfully evident in her voice. Harmony, you know I'm happy to see you. Come on. I didn't know you were happy about anything anymore. You know what I mean. Harmony was silent. Look, I'm sorry. I'm really glad you came to see me, okay? Why don't you come inside? Harmony finally accepted this offer and stepped into the house. It wasn't exactly a mess inside, but it looked like it hadn't had a good cleaning in a while. She followed Hideki upstairs to his room. Ah, here was the mess. A seemingly random assortment of clothes littered the floor, and she couldn't move three feet in any direction without finding a can or bottle of some sort. Hideki was looking just as tidy himself. He wore nothing but a pair of dark blue gym shorts and a white tank top. At least, Harmony assumed it had been a Harmony assumed it had been white at some point. It looked like he'd been wearing it for the last day or two now. His shoulder-length hair was completely disheveled, leading Harmony to believe that he had been asleep up until she knocked on his door. His eyes looked dark and heavy, another sign that he hadn't been awake for too long. She could tell she, that he hadn't shaved in a few days, either. Excuse the mess, he said to her as he sat down on his bed. She wasn't sure if he was referring to the room or himself. Ah, damn it, he exclaimed, looking down at himself as he just noticed he was barely dressed. Let me throw something on real quick. He immediately stood up and went to a spot in the middle of the room where a pile of garbage seemed to mount the highest. After moving a few brown boxes and pizza boxes, he excavated a pair of jeans which he slid on over his shorts. She couldn't help but wonder about how long it must have been since the last time he'd worn pants. He then started looking somewhat frantically around the room. My jacket, he said after noticing the puzzled look on the, gu on the girl's face. I can't remember where I put the damn... H Hideki, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I don't want to be rude. Hideki! I don't mind. Just sit. We gotta talk. Hideki relented and sat back down in his bed. Harmony sat down beside him. What's it going to take to convince you, Harm? I'm not here for that, she said, already knowing what he was referring to. I'm... I'm leaving, Hideki. Leaving? He repeated a slight, genuine look of concern on his face. What do you mean? I'm moving. Me and my mom. To the Sinnoh region. I don't get it. You can't leave. You're an icon in Johto. I know. A look of realization came across Hideki's face. I was afraid of this. Afraid of what? Afraid you couldn't handle it. Harmony shifted her gaze down to her feet. She knew Hideki always spoke bluntly, but the harshness of his words hurt her more than usual this time. You're too free. I was worried this might happen. You're not the kind of person who could ever embrace that life. Harmony chuckled lightly. It made her feel a little better that Hideki had developed this spot-on analysis of her without needing much of an explanation. And many still cared. I think it's better this way. Considering the alternative is you changing. I don't want you to change. Don't let this change you, Harmony. Tears began to build in her eyes. Hideki, thank you. I won't. I promise. Good. It didn't have to change you either, you know. That's different, Harmony. How's it different? We both took the same challenge. We both got to... I failed. Harmony had already had a counter-argument for this point, for he brought it up every time they talked about this. But for now, she thought it best to let the gravity of the statement sink in, weighed down by the silence between the two. But you also won. You won right here in your home region. That doesn't matter. Why the hell not? She was getting upset now. She could never understand the boy's staunch insistence on his own incompetence. Are you telling me that the whole thing meant nothing? That your Pokemon's efforts were meaningless? Harmony. That Gerald died for nothing. Don't... He barked out loud. Go there. Again, a heavy silence fell between the two. Hideki, I'm sorry. I I wish I hadn't said that. I just... I get so frustrated with you sometimes. Hideki was silent. 
I want so much more for you, she said. Tears began welling up again. I miss you! She sprang towards him, embracing him and burying her face into her shoulder. She was sobbing uncontrollably at this point. Hideki put, her arms, or put his arms around her in a feeble attempt to console her. But it took her several minutes before she could speak again. Why can't you understand? She said through sobs. You can change this. You! You can't! You can bring the old Hideki back. Harmony, he said, his voice cracking slightly, as this was the first has as this was his first word for close to ten minutes. Hideki's form began to vibrate on the nightstand. He let it go as he was searching for the words that could repair the damage he'd done to her. He knew the best answer, of course, the answer he was look that she was looking for, but he couldn't lie now. Aren't you going to answer? No. It doesn't matter. I don't care about that right now. I thought you didn't care about anything. I care about you. The phone began to vibrate again. Hideki, answer it. Twice in a row. It might be important. It's probably just Joey. I swear, one of these days I'm going to snap that Rattata's neck. This got a chuckle out of both of them. <laughs> After a short silence, the phone began to vibrate for a third time. Hideki, all right. Hideki closed the phone. It was Professor Oak, he explained. He's got a weird radicate he wants me to look at. Weird radicate? What's weird about it? Don't know, don't care, he said, standing up. Harmonia stayed Harmonia stayed seated on his bed, rubbing her eyes. Harm, you okay? He asked, genuinely concerned about the answer. Yeah, I just, I guess, I, I needed to get some stuff out there. She chuckled dryly. Look, Oak seemed pretty wound up over that radicate thing. I should... I understand. No, wait, let me finish. I was wondering if you'd mind coming with me. You know the professor too, right? I'm sure he'd be happy to see you. Then maybe we could finish our talk, unless you're in a hurry. Harmony smiled. No, I'm not in any hurry. I'd be happy to go with you. Great. Hideki smiled in return. Let's see if we can find that jacket of mine. This made Harmony laugh, though she wasn't sure why. Hideki looked a little more respectable once he and Harmony stepped out of the house. He found the jacket. It was a red hooded jacket with a logo that created the shape of a black pokeball when zipped up all the way. Hideki always wore it unzipped. On his head he wore a dark blue hat with an interlocking N and Y insignia on the front. He wore the jacket's hood up over the hat. When they reached the professor's lab, they were greeted without Oak's usual warmth. Hideki! Harmony! You two have spent excessive amounts of time around Pokemon, right? I want to... I want you both to have a look at this radicate of mine. I have no idea how either of us could possibly determine anything about a Pokemon better than you could, Professor, said Hideki. I'm completely stumped, the old man said, and somewhat disturbed. I've never in all my born days... Oak led them to the back of his lab, where Eradicate sat in a glass case on top of a table. Hideki and Harmony walked up to give it a better look. The Eradicate definitely seemed to be on his last leg. Its fur was matted and faded, or it still had fur anyway. The bald spots were covered with scabby, crusted skin. It looked like it was struggling to keep its eyes open or even focused on one particular spot. Yet, at the same time, it also looked quite hungry. This thing looks like death, Professor, Hideki noted. Funny you should use the word death, the professor said. This Radicate died two days ago. But, a perplexed harmony began, I mean, it's obviously alive, kind of. This Radicate belonged to my grandson. You may not recognize it now, Hideki, but I'm sure you faced it a few times at least. But Rattata and even their revolve form, Radicate, don't live very long. When it passed away two days ago, I was hardly surprised. Are you sure it was dead? Harmony asked. I felt its pulse, and it had none, Oak explained. So I put it in this glass container to prepare to take it to Lavender Tower to have it properly put to rest, but you know how things pile up around here. And then this morning, 
I heard a rustling coming from its cage, and there it was. Clearly, <laughs> The three spun around instinctively to find the source of the crash, and found that the Raticate had managed to push its cage off of the table and onto the floor, the fall shattering the container. The Raticate lay motionless on the floor, a few shards of glass sticking out of it. Damn stupid rat! Oak muttered to himself. Well, it's dead now! As Oak turned to clean up the rest, Hideki thought he heard a faint whisper coming from the dead rat. Raticate! To everyone's amazement, the creature again stood up and started walking slowly towards Professor Oak. What in? Oak began. He scooped down and picked up the Pokemon. You're a resilient one, aren't you? All right then, let's get you one a Raticate! Hideki and Harmony watched in horror as the, as the Raticate lunged for Oak's throat, ripping him apart with his notorious sharp teeth. Oak's screams of terror quickly turned into uncomprehensible gurgles. Professor! Harmony shrieked. Harmony, get back! Hideki yelled. Thinking quickly, he reached onto his belt and pulled out a Pokeball, which he threw to the ground in front of the Raticate, who was now biting into the Professor's skull. Rochelle, use Brick Break! The Pokeball opened to reveal a golem, and the beast instantly jumped into the air and landed hard next to the rat, slamming a fist down into its back as it did so, and producing a horrifying crunching sound. Rochelle had just shattered the rat's spine, but to Hideki's surprise, the creature didn't even cry out in pain. It didn't seem to feel the blow at all. Its back half now useless, the creature started feebly crawling after Rochelle on its two front legs. How the hell did that- Hideki, kill it for God's sake! Rochelle, use Brick Break again, and this time aim for the head. The golem again leapt into the air, this time plunging its fist into the Raticate's skull on its way down. This produced yet another crunch, as the beast's head visibly flattened, blood now pouring out of its ears, eyes, and mouth. Finally, it had stopped moving. Rochelle, I don't know what that was, and I'm sorry for making you do that, but you just saved us. Thank you. With that, Hideki withdrew a shell into her ball. You all right, Harmony? Harmony was frozen in place, a terrified look on her face. Hideki rushed over and held her tightly. It's all right, Harmony. You hear me? It's okay. It's over. Okay, so that was chapter two of Apocalypse Now, and I hope you all did enjoy it. None of the zombies have actually gotten started. Uh, if you all did enjoy it, please leave me some feedback in the comments. Um, if you all aren't enjoying it, I can stop this if you'd like. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going unless you all have any issue with me continuing it. Um, and also let me know if uploading these two at a time is enough, or if you want me to upload more, or less, or anything like that. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye now.